Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. So a while ago I was having this conversation with a friend of mine about atmospheres and how to sound design them and he said, and I quote, you can essentially build atmospheres out of your hat. And I thought to myself, okay, this is amazing. I have to make a tutorial about this because if we stick to the stock plugins of Bitwig, Ableton, whatever door you're using, there's no excuse in here, you know, that I'm just using Bitwig and you can do this. So if we stick to the stock plugins of the door we're using, we're not only getting to know where are the limits of this DAW, or essentially we're crossing these boundaries and these limits we thought the DAW has, but also it's some sort of a, an exercise that will force us to think outside of the box. And I think this is pretty interesting and exciting, and this tutorial is all about this, making atmospheres out of a hat sample. Before we dive into the tutorial, if you'd like to support the channel, you can consider becoming one of my patron or buy my presets on Gumroad or leave a like, comment, subscribe. This helps the channel a lot. Content like this is posted every week, special content for my patrons. Now, let's get back to the tutorial. So for this example, what I'm going to do, I'll take a sample from, oops, I'll take a sample from uh, Future Phonic Foundations by Virtual Light. Really nice samples. We don't need more than this. Here's an open hi-hat. I'm going to use an open hi-hat because it has like more tonal part and it's a little bit longer than a closed hi-hat, so it'll make life easier. But you can use whatever you like. So essentially what I'll do, I'll create a loop. What we're going to do exactly in here is create some sort of a fake granular synthesizer and we'll do so by looping a part of the sample, let's say in here. Okay, um, let's arm this. Let's set it to loop. Like so, and now we will have this. Okay, nothing too special for the moment. Let's take off the velocity sensibility. I have this. Now, what I'll do, I'll change the root node to G sharp one because this project is in G sharp. So basically, my push is programmed to send the root node every time. So it'll just make my life easier, but you can set it to whatever you like, you know, whatever that's what you find. So now we have this. Perfect. So the first thing that I'm going to do in here is I'll set this uh, play mode in here to textures. Okay. Now we have this. And I'll set the motion to say the maximum. We're getting some sort of a, like a granular, a granular synthesizer feeling. So what I'll do essentially in here is I'll play with the motion and I'll play with the grain. And this will create some sort of a weird kind of a texture going on. Okay. What I'll do if I'm not doing this tutorial, I'll link these grain and motion parameters to my pushes encoders and I'll just modulate them manually. But to make matters simple for the tutorial, I'm just going to add random modulators on the motion and the grain. So I'll add a random modulator in here and I'll add another one in here too. So we'll have two random modulators and one will modulate the motion to somewhere in here and the other will modulate the grain to somewhere in here. Both of them will be set to let's say a one will be half a note, the other will be a bar, and both of them will be sample and glide kind of modulations. Now we have this. Okay. 
Okay, pretty nice. Uh, I'll set both of them to half note, actually. And they will modulate a little bit less. I don't want them to go really, really fast. Like, I want to have, like, a little bit of cranes, you know. And the last thing that we can do is add another random um, modulator, and this one will modulate the panning. And this one I'll set it to bipolar modulation. So now I'll set it to half note, so we'll get like random panning. So typical granular type of effects. Perfect, I'll just make it modulate a little bit less, okay? Perfect. Now what I'll do, this will be our like, some sort of a texture layer. Uh, like this will just fill up the space. And now I want to create like a real, uh, let's say the atmosphere, atmospheric sound. And um, if that doesn't make sense, just follow along and it'll eventually make sense, you know, when all the sounds will be playing together. So what I'll do, I'll create a group channel in here and I'll duplicate this hat. So basically now we have two of them running. The second one, I'll delete all of these modulators from. I'll solo it for now. I'll set it to cycles. Now we have this. And if I play with the formant, we'll get this type of sound. And now I can play with the speed and it'll add like a um, character to the sound, if that makes sense. Let's leave it something like this and I'll set formant in here to minus 12 semitones. Yeah, minus 12 is perfect. And we can always play with the pitch. Perfect, now both sounds together. That's pretty nice, but it's just like noise with noise. So what I'll do to control this noise, I'll add some filters. So for this, I'll use the filter from Btwig. And I'll set it to a bandpass 24 decibel per octaves. Pretty nice. And I'll control this cutoff in here with a macro. Pretty nice. And now what I'll do, I'll create some sort of a fake formant filter by grouping this filter in here and duplicating it, like so. So the second filter, I'll set it to actually a 12 decibels per octave filter. And I'll offset it from the first filter. So now we have this. Pretty nice. Now both filters together, I can add one macro that will control both macros. This is where things get pretty interesting in Bitwig. So now this one will be the cutoff and we'll control both cutoffs. Now we have this. Doesn't really sound as formanty as I thought, maybe like this.
Okay, that's pretty nice for now. We can model, we can change the settings later on, you know. These type of sounds are all about like happy accidents and what I'll do right now might not work the next time I'll do it, so I'll change the parameters. You get the idea. So now what I'll do, I'll add a ring modulator. But what I'll do is that I'll, I want to keep the filters at the end. So I'll add the ring mod before it. So let's add ring mod later in here. And I really love ring modulators because they can add a lot of character to the sound. Check this out. So let's take off the filters for a second. See, there's this like sweet spot in here. Sounds really nice. So what I'll do, I'll modulate it with the NLFO. Uh, again, these kind of things, I would have just drawn some manual automations, but for the sake of the tutorial, we'll add LFOs and random stuff. So I'll go with the classic LFO like this. Be really slow and it'll modulate in a unipolar fashion the rate. Okay, pretty nice. And now what I'll do, I'll add a random modulator in here, and this random modulator will modulate the speed of the LFO just a tiny bit, like this. And for sure mix, 100%. Pretty nice. Now if I'll turn on my cutoffs again. Pretty nice, we're starting to get like some really weird stuff going on. Okay, let's close these for now. Uh, let's go to the second filter in here. And I'll add a four pole filter. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I was saying it's a 24 dB per octave filter. It's actually a 12 dB per octave filter. And this is a 6 dB per octave filter. My bad. So now we have this. Sounds pretty nice. Now, what I'll do, I'll, uh, let's try adding a resonator bank. So what the resonators bank will do essentially is like adding uh, several, well, in this case, six uh, like peaks or bells on the sound. And these bells will have like high resonance that they will just start resonating. And this resonance, like this added resonance will actually give a tone to the sound. And like this, we can essentially tune it. So if I'll... Let's turn down the main volume like this, down. So basically we'll have something that sounds like this. Pretty interesting. So what I'll do in here, I have a preset that I've created, which is a C. All of these resonances are set to C. And it's pitch track. So basically, when I'll play a note, these resonances will pitch track the note that I'm playing. And what I'll do, I'll add a random modulator just for the sake of the tutorial again, and I'll set it to the master frequency of these, all of these resonances, okay? I'll set it to bipolar modulation, I'll set it to sample and glide, and I'll ask it to modulate every half a note. So now we have this. Okay, maybe that's too fast. 
Let's set it to one bar. Okay, that's pretty nice, but actually I don't think a, a random modulator is the best of ideas. So what I'll do, I'll just add a simple LFO, classic LFO like this, modulate pitch. And I'll turn down the mix because it's a really dominant sound and I just want us to like get a glimpse of it. So now we have this. And maybe I'll set the resonator bank behind the filters. So now we have this. nice now what I'll do I'll add a phaser I'm going to use the phaser plus from bitwig set the algorithm to MX speed pretty low give it some feedback and mix all the way up Let's take the depth a little bit Yeah, this is what I'm looking for basically. A little bit of depth from the internal LFO, make it, yeah, 10 hertz should be nice. Less feedback. Let's take the mix of the resonator bank a little bit lower. Pretty cool. Now let's add a comp filter. I love comp filters, man. Uh, and the comp filter, oh, you know what? Before the comp filter, I want to add a frequency shifter. Okay, so what is pretty interesting with frequency shifter is that in here, it has a really nice character to it, first of all. Okay, you know, let's take the phaser down for now, and there is an inter bank for now. It has this range knob, let's set it to, yeah, let's say 5k. It has a really nice thing to it, so let's take the range down a little bit. Pretty cool. And you know that I'm going to modulate this with an LFO. I said, uh, take a classic LFO, modulate pitch, let's say, somewhere in here. Set it to slow triangle. Pretty cool. I'll set it behind the filters and I'll set the phaser also behind the frequency shifter for now. Let's add the resonator bank again, but with a less mix. More feedback for the phaser. and maybe a tiny bit of a random modulator on the frequency shift in here. Just a tiny bit, it's going to be bipolar, sample and glide, pretty slow, maybe one bar. Thank <laughs> you. 
pretty cool. Now let's add the comp filter. And I'll set it to really slow, maybe like 20 hertz. So now we have this. More feedback. Just created one weird monster. Let's go back to the samples in here. I'm going to t turn uh, turn down this one. I'll add more modulation on the left and right, just so we will hear it. And this one, which is giving us like the body of our uh, sound, I'll set it to minus twelve semitones. It's like so. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Let's try the comp before the filter. I need to take down the... Oh, by the way, we're clipping so hard. Let's add a limiter in here. Um... I'll, I'll t take down these. So basically what I've just did is I've turned down the level of the filters so we'll clip less. Let's add the comp after the filters sounded better. And let's set this second filter to six, basically to six decibel per octaves or two poles. Yeah, exactly, creating weirdness. And now let's add a reverb to it. Maybe I'll get an equalizer in here, or you know what? I'll just turn down these resonances because I'm just abusing them. We can try something just to see how well will it sounds like. I'll set the filters behind after the phaser and before the frequency shifter. See what it'll do. Pretty nice. Let's add more random modulation on the shift, on the frequency shift, less classic LFO. Let's give it a delay.
And we can actually push things. If I'll take the resonators bank that I've just turned off, I'll set it after the resonator, no, after the comp, we'll get this. created weirdness man let's take the frequency shift a little bit this This is awesome, man. Using these techniques will help you explore what these dolls are capable of doing and what these effects that you have are capable of doing. I mean, like, this weirdness has been made with a sample of a hat. And I am modulating... Most of the stuff with random LFOs just to make this tutorial like simple, if that makes sense. So imagine like you drawing every modulation the way you'd like. I think you'll get like results that rocks. So yeah, with this, this is the end of this tutorial. I really hope you've liked it. I really hope you've learned something new. And yeah, see you next time.